Okay, here we're going to be using the direct cash flow method to determine our cash flow statement. And this is where we use the actual cash flows through our cash account. And we're going to be using this equation here, where assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. So what I've done here with assets, I've broken it apart between the cash asset here and all other assets. So let's go down and look at how we'd uh, set up our equation. And for our assets here, we'd have the change in cash plus all these other assets equal our change in liabilities plus our change in stockholders equity. So uh, what I've done here is I've moved this change or this change in other assets over to the other side of the equation. So what we would have here is the change in cash equals minus the change in all the other assets plus the change in liabilities plus the change in stockholders equity. Our change in cash for operating activities, that would include our revenues, expenses, cost of goods sold that are included in that income. And we're, what we're looking at here is the change in cash provided by these operations. And that change in cash here for operating activities would include our short-term assets and liabilities. So if we go down here and look at our accounting equation here, where we have a change in our liabilities here uh, of, say, a positive amount of 1500 that translates over here to a change in cash at the same, uh, same of $1,500 or the same amount. And a negative change in our change in liabilities transfers over here to a negative change in our cash. Now, our other assets here, our current assets that we're looking at, remember due to the arithmetic change here, a re increase in our other assets would be a reduction in our cash. And same here for a reduction in our other assets would be an increase in our cash. So what we're doing here is we're not including any of our non-cash flows that are would be normal or that are included in net income and expenses. All we're doing is looking at what flows through this cash account here for these current liabilities and current assets that are recognized as revenues and expenses over here as part of net income or our cash provided by our operations. So looking at our debits and credits here in our T accounts, a increase here in our current assets uh, a debit amount here would be a credit here or reduction in our cash and looking over at our liabilities here uh, an increase in our liabilities here would be an increase in our cash and same for a reduction here in our current liabilities would be a reduction in cash and also here for our current assets any reduction in our current assets here would be an increase in our cash account Okay, let's look at what would be included in current assets. First, we'd have our cash and our cash equivalents, then our short-term investments here. Now you'll see these stocks and bonds. Those are the ones that are classified as available for sale. Then this, any of these contra accounts here, like this valuation allowance, that would not be part of a cash transaction. Then we have our receivables here. Again, this allowance for bad debts, that would be a contra account not part of a cash transaction. Then we have our various uh, inventories here for, in this case, a manufacturer, and then an inventory here for a realtor, or retailer, excuse me, then our inventory here for a service company. And prepaid expenses here, and then other current assets, notes receivable, and so forth. Then we have these contra accounts. Now those would not be part of any cash transaction. They're non-cash revenues or expenses that are recognized as part of net income, but a non-cash transaction. All right, our current liabilities would include anything that is short-term, like a short-term notes payable here or short-term accounts payable. And then we'd have also these accrued expenses or accrued liabilities here. And those are the ones that uh, would require a cash transaction. And then we just scan on through the list here. The unearned revenues, all those short-term items that would be included as a cash transaction. Okay. Uh, all right, to summarize, our change in cash provided by operations here or our change in cash for operati operating activities. That would include all our current liabilities here and current assets or short-term liabilities and short-term assets and what 
uh, cash transactions they involve. So if we have an increase here in our cash account or a debit amount to our cash account, that would be a cash inflow to the company and a credit amount here, a reduction in cash, would be a cash outflow. So if we go down here and look at our cash flow statement for operating activities, we'd have it summarized here. We'd have all the cash inflows summarized here and then the cash outflow summarized here. And then we'd be looking for the net, uh, diff or net amount between the cash inflows and the cash outflows. And then we'd have it listed here as the net cash provided or used for operating activities. Uh, net cash provided would mean we'd have a greater cash inflow. Uh, net cash used would be a greater cash outflow. And what we're looking for is this net amount here between the cash inflows and the cash outflows. So we want to determine if this is a positive or negative amount and by how much. And that would be um, our cash flow statement for operating activities.